Hi, I'm back. And I promised you at the head of this tape that I would uh, go in a little bit more details about the film that you just saw. Now, a very interesting kind of story happened about how uh, uh, Wong Kar Wai made Chungking Express. He was doing this epic swordsman film called Ashes of Time. The star is basically every star in uh, all the, the Hong Kong lexicon. It was taking him years to film it. Not years to film it, but it's taking him a long time. And um, what happened is he's doing this big epic. It's taking forever, and then he starts editing it. And editing it's taking him forever. And then it's just going on and on and on. And finally, you know, he says, you know, I can't see anything anymore. All I see is this big epic film I'm doing. And to kind of, like, shake away the cobwebs, all right, he came up with an idea for uh, Chunking Express, what we basically saw. All right, and said, let me just do this real quick kind of down and dirty movie that I can just kind of knock out and just kind of like, you know, feel like push-ups more or less. Do that, and then I'll go back and be able to do uh, my epic again. Well, that's exactly what he did. He got together, they shot uh, a Chunking Express uh, fairly quickly, and just like, you know, zapped it out and had a good time editing it, and like all of a sudden, as opposed to this you know, big epic he was doing, you know, he did more of like a fun, cool, quick rock and roll style film, and then that's exactly, uh, and it worked out just the way he wanted it to. When it was finished, he went right back to doing uh, Ashes of Time, his epic, you know, with a whole renewed energy, you know, that uh, Making Chunking Express gave him. And both films actually came out in uh, uh, Hong Kong around the same time. So it was like, so it was like literally just kind of a way to uh, jumpstart his own uh, uh, stalledness. And you can see that in the film. The film has this kind of, go for it, jumpy uh, energy, you know, that you know, is exactly what he needed at the time. Now, if you like this film, other films that Wong Kar Wai has done that you should definitely check out is uh, As Tears Go By, which was his first film, which uh, um, is sort of like a kind of like a, a Mean Streets kind of like story set in Hong Kong. And the other, another film he's did is uh, Days of Being Wild, which is the first Wong Kar Wai film that I actually saw. And it's a, a sort of like, you know, again, it has a big, you know, big plethora of actors. Uh, Tony Lung, who plays the the cop that, uh, whose apartment gets invaded by uh, Fei Wong. He's in uh, um, uh, Days of Being Wild. And uh, it plays like a, a Hong Kong version of American Graffiti. I, that's the film that I first saw him in and wanted to like, explore more of his work. All right, uh, he also did uh, Ashes of Time, which is available. And, uh, and the film that he did after Chungking Express, basically at this moment, his newest movie is a film called Fallen Angels, which again has a lineage to um, Chungking Express in so far as originally Chungking Express, like Pulp Fiction, was going to be comprised of three stories. But he ended up like just like liking the two that he had, and they, that ended up being story enough. Fallen Angels, more or less, is the third story he would have filmed for Chunking Express if he had done three stories. So, if you like Chunking Express, then definitely check out Fallen Angels because it's, it's you know, more or less the continuation of it. Now, some of the, the gals in this movie, let me give you some uh, info on them. Bridget Lynn, who was the woman uh, with the, uh, uh, the blonde wig in the film, she it's more or less considered the, the Greta Garbo of Hong Kong, and she deserves that title perfectly. She's one of the most charismatic stars, I think, in the world. And she kind of has that, you know, she doesn't look like Garbo, but she has that, that wonderfully statuesque face. Thing is, you might have seen her in one of her first movies that came out was uh, Peking Opera Blues, one of the greatest films ever made. Peking Opera Blues is just is a, is a blast. It's a lot of fun. She's in uh, the first Jackie Chan uh, uh, police story. But then what happened with her was as time went on, her career started kind of like uh, fading out a little bit. But then she did a movie called um, uh, Swordmaster 2, all right, with, along with a Jet Li. Now, the thing is, in that movie, she played a male who was uh, ascending to like this godlike position, all right? And the only way to attain this godlike position was to castrate himself, all right? And she played the castrated male god in the movie. It was a smash in Hong Kong and all over the Orient and made Bridget Lin a huge star. However, she started this whole thing in a series of movies where basically she's al almost always playing either uh, uh, a god, 
you know, a force of evil, a force of nature. She's playing a, a woman passing as a male, or in the case of like Swordsman 2 and its sequel, The East is Red, actually playing a male. All right, you know, that cross dresses like a woman. That's like this, she's cornered this market in, in uh, 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 China playing these kind of movies. And it's, you know, she's fantastic. She's really great. She's one of the few human beings that can pull off playing God like that. Other movies that she done that you might want to see, like I said, uh, there's Swordsman 2, its sequel, The East is Red. She plays, uh, she's the lead in uh, uh, The Bride with White Hair, The Bride with White Hair, and also check up uh, uh, Peking Opera Blues. She's very, very good in that. All right, oddly enough, um, oh, also check out Ashes of Time. She's excellent in that as well. Uh, oddly enough, in this film, this was her last movie. She quit, basically, uh, uh, the business after this film and got married. So this was her, her farewell song. And she not normally, don't, normally doesn't wear the blonde wig. The reason that Wong Kar Wai wanted her to wear the blonde wig is for two reasons. One, he liked the idea of having the uh, Chinese garbo mask and dark glasses and a blonde wig so you, she's almost recognizable from her, her normal persona. All right, and two, this character was a homage to uh, the Jenna Rollins character in uh, John Cassavetes' uh, Gloria. Yeah, Wong Kar Wai loves that movie, and this, this character was set up to be his Gloria. All right, the other female lead in it, that perky little uh, nymphette, all right, that takes over the, that poor guy's uh, apartment, is Fei Wong. Now, this was Fei Wong's first movie. Fei Wong, though, is the single most popular rock star, all right, in Hong Kong right now. She's a huge smash you know, smash recording artist. And this was her first movie. And she's like, she's known as uh, uh, the Madonna of uh, Mandarin. And, um, and she, this was her uh, first feature. And she just like stole everybody's heart. She won a uh, Best Actress at the, the Hong Kong Film Awards. She's great. She's great in the film. And uh, the, the, the Chinese version of uh, the Cranberry song that you hear in the film is actually sung by Fei Wong. And I'm sorry, I don't think I'll ever be able to see California Dreaming again without like seeing Fei Wong do her little dance. It's, you know, she's the best. Uh, she's, everyone, I don't know anybody who hasn't seen this movie that hasn't gotten a crush on her. Now, the thing that you should understand about Wong Kar Wai's style and what makes it different from the majority of films coming out of Hong Kong is almost all the Hong Kong films are either like wild, crazy comedies, wild, crazy fantasy films that, you know, you know, have a very Sam Raimi kind of style. And then like the, what's become, you know, the John Woo, Ringo Lam, ba 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 action films. All right. Well, Wong Kar Wai has all that same energy that like, you know, this Hong Kong tends to bring to its cinema. But he's also taking a cue from the French New Wave films of the late 50s, early 60s, the films that Godard did, the th films that uh, Claude Chabrot, Eric Romer, and uh, Francois Truffaut uh, uh, did in their early days. All right. In particular, Godard is his man. The film, you know, the, the, his style, his kind of uh, sense of fun is, uh, is what he brings to the film. And it's so, um, I got to tell you, it's just very different in looking at Asian cinema to see the mix of French New Wave inside of that. The thing about the French New Wave is a lot of you might have heard of the term but not know exactly what it means. All right, with the French New Wave, it was a group of young filmmakers that came out uh, in, in France who were basically, they were, they were rebelling against the, what they considered the bourgeois cinema of uh, 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 the, you know, the, the French studio system. All right, and their way to do movies was to take genre pieces and then just kind of break the rules, make, you know, kind of like they have a feeling of making them up as they go along. They weren't studied in film school. They were studied from film criticism and films. And when you look at a lot of those films, they have an infectious quality, almost like if you just love movies enough, you don't need to study. Loving movies is enough to be able to make a good movie. Well. That, in its own way, is pretty much the style that Wong Kar Wai has brought to Hong Kong films. Now, if you liked uh, Wong Kar Wai's films, you should definitely check out some films of Godard, all right? You know, uh, and some films along the same lines that he did are uh, The Original Breathless with Jean-Paul Belmondo, um, A Band of Outsiders, which the French title was called Band Par, which is what my company, A Band Apart, is named after, and another film called uh, My Life to Live. Uh, Uma Thurman's character in uh, 
Pulp Fiction was you know, not too dissimilar from uh, Godard's uh, wife, uh, Anna Karenina who uh, is in a bunch of his movies and had the same kind of haircut. <laughs> anyway, that's it for uh, the first film on the Rolling Thunder video collection, Chunking Express. And we'll see you next time with our next film, Jack Hill's Switchblade Sisters.